Um, you know, when I work with entrepreneurs, they have a, a strong idea and a passion for what they're doing. They know what they want, but oftentimes they're technical people and they have a hard time articulating that in business terms. Uh, I see a lot of business plans that people have begun, set aside, tried to use them, they're not ready to use, and they come to me to talk about how to make it better. And what I encourage people to do is to sit down and look at their business holistically. Take apart each of the business model components. You have to take apart sales, product planning, marketing, financial side of things. You know, there's, there's each of the different departments. And one of the areas that gets forgotten often is the partnering, the strategic alliance piece. That's generally because nobody knows what to do with it. But it's very important to take apart each of the components, look at each set of objectives. There should be a separate set of objectives for each uh, of the components, each of the departments. And then holistically put them back together in a format that helps guide the company forward. You know, you want your business plan to help you get funded most of the time, but you also want your business plan to guide your business forward. It's so important to go through this process of taking it apart and putting it back together. I also encourage entrepreneurs when I you know, sit down with them to, to put together a, a road map document that's often on one page and basically to take the different departments of the company and put them on the left axis and to put a timeline across the top and in fact put your milestones, your objectives in, in graphic form on a chart and make sure that logically when you look at it, listen, I can't get, you know, I have to have the product done first before I can do the press release. I have to have the press release out before I, you know, can participate in the, the, the trade show. And I need, you know, things are connected and you want to set up and make sure that things are laid out in a, and make sense in a logical manner. Um, and I generally will feed that back into the investment documentation and part of the business planning process. Um, in general, I, I talk with a lot of entrepreneurs who are so busy running their company, they don't have time to write the business plan. And that's, that's usually the first reason why they call me. They want, they want somebody to take responsibility for it, to own the process. And, you know, I, I would encourage people to, to go through the process themselves first. Um, and then come to me with what they've thought about and, and you know, the, the basic foundation on paper. And then we go through it and we take a look at, as I said, the basic components. But um, it also depends on what you're writing the business plan for. You know, most people are writing business plan for the investment process. And the investment process is very dependent on the kind of investor that your business plan will be going to and the level of investment that you're working at. If you're looking for you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars versus five million, it's a very, very different plan. Um, I encourage people to ready themselves for what we consider here in Silicon Valley as standard Series A investment. But in fact, there may be, you know, you may have investors that don't want that level of due diligence. It can only benefit you to go through the process and lay everything down on paper, including the financial process, which is, which is a very time-consuming process. Um, yeah. So in general, the, the team that produces the business plan is the executive team. And if there is no executive team, if you're really a garage kind of startup, um, it is the founders. And it's important that all the founders participate as best they can. Usually when I go through the business planning process with a company, I, we find where the uh, glitches are. We find where the differences are between perhaps the CTO's idea of what the company is versus the, the, the CEO's idea of the company, the products, the, you know, the plan. And the business planning process is so important to get everyone on the same page. So if you do have an executive team, you definitely want them all to participate. Um, it starts with the product, the product plan. And so it's so important for the technology people to not just write this off as something we do for investors. It's really integral to developing, you know, a, a planning process for the company's growth. So how long does it take to write a business plan? Well, it can take months, it can take years. You know, a business plan is a living, breathing 
uh, document, and it should be, and you should address it on a quarterly basis once your company gets going. But to sit down and write the first one, I've seen people do it in 10 days with you know, months of research and preparation. Um, and I've seen people do it over three or four months. I generally say a month of time, uh, over a month of time is a good period of time to get a good gist of what's going on in the world and what's going on in the company. I, I encourage any of the people that I work with on the entrepreneurial side, if you have a product with customers, this is your greatest asset. This is what investors want to know. Who's buying the product? How do they like it? How do they install it? How do they use it? Do they think about it? Do they love it? Um, if you can get testimonials from customers, give them a discount. <laughs> give them something extra to allow them to be published. Um, some of them will do it for free. Put, it, put this on your website. Put this on your marketing materials. Absolutely put a quote sheet together. When you distribute your executive summary, distribute your quote sheet. Um, the quote sheet could have also quips from any articles that have been published about your company or your product and from any analysts. Um, I think the analyst community is very uh, underutilized by the startups. Startups are afraid to call the analysts. They don't want to get off on the wrong foot. But I cannot tell you the power of what an analyst quote can do. And if you don't know how to get to an analyst, find someone who does PR because these people will work with you to get you in front of the analysts. It's not that expensive and it's money well worth spending. Um, you will often find the analyst won't want you to publish that, but if it's just for internal use, like your business plan, you can say anything you want to say, as long as they actually said it. Don't really ever make anything up about your product. If your customers or your uh, users of your product need guidelines in helping them say something great about your product, there's nothing wrong with giving them a guideline, but you need to have the A-OK -okay that they say, I said that. So, you know, market size is something that most investors want to talk about. Um, you know, there's, there's practical, technological investors, and there are the MBA types. And the MBA types, they, every single one of them, is, they're going to start off with market size, and they're going to want to see your market sizing model. And what I always recommend to people is use published information. You don't need to spend $5,000 on a Gartner report. Things are published, summary information is published, and you can extrapolate a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one. As long as you put together a model that identifies what your sources are and you feel good about that, then you have your view of the world. And your view of the world is a very interesting view of the world if it's put together in a compelling way. Um, I, I always encourage people to think about markets coming together. If you're in an emerging market and there's nothing measuring your market existing out there. You want to make sure you think of your market as the coming together of market A, market B, market C. It makes a great visual, circles coming together, you're the part in the middle. Um, you can extrapolate if this market's a, a billion and that market's a billion and that market's a billion, well they come together in this, you know, one point something billion dollar new market. And hopefully by the time you get out there and you start talking to investors, some of them will have good feedback for you on market sizing. Investors have uh, access to the kind of reports that you wish you could pay for. Ask them for it. You know, it, you have to look at in the investment process as a two-way process. I mean, you're going out there and telling your story over and over and over, and every time you tell it, somebody has something to say. This is very, very important. You can learn a lot. You want to be a good listener. After every meeting, you want to take your feedback and put it into a, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, some kind of a chart, so that you can track what people are saying. And you will see very quickly, when there's two or three investors saying the same thing over and over and over, you need to sit down and think about it. When you've got five or more investors saying the same thing, this market isn't big enough. This product isn't well developed enough. You have no customers. We won't fund anyone until we have customers. Whatever those issues are, you need to go back and readdress it. And oftentimes, they will not be easy topics. You may need to bring in a consultant, an advisor, somebody who knows about this market, who can dig a little deeper and help you get over these issues. Um, the, the strategic piece of things is very important in terms of you know, which, which partners are going to help me create leverage. And that's often an area that I see entrepreneurs 
you know, needing some help with. And the investors will tell you, track it and readdress it and bring in additional information from somebody who knows the market. Um, you know, if you have to throw a few thousand shares at an advisor to get their help, it's shares well spent. You know, I've seen so many business plans over the years, you start to see them in a way that they make a lot of the same mistakes over and over and over. The biggest mistake that I see in both business plans and PowerPoint presentation documents intended for investors is that the entrepreneur is speaking the language of the technologist. They're talking about the technology. You should be able to sell your company to the investors without talking about the technology all that much. Um, sell the value. You should be able to sell the product to your customer in the same way. Um, think about the value on a, from a business perspective. If you can put together an ROI model, even better. Um, sometimes that's not possible. But take the focus off the product. And if it's a problem that is very widespread, you, know, you don't need to spend five slides saying how bad the problem is. I just worked with an anti-spam startup and, you know, there's not a person in Silicon Valley that doesn't know the size and, and the issue around, it, around spam. Everybody has the problem. Don't waste your time. Use your time for, for better issues. Um, don't ask somebody for money unless you know what you're going to do with that money. A lot of times people want to get out there before they finish their work, and their work part of that work is the financial work. They want to get the process going because it's a time-consuming process. The financials are such an important part of the presentation and being able to express them in a summary form um, and discuss them at a summary level, at a 30,000 foot level, is so important. So I'm going to give an example of a company I worked with recently called Corvigo. And uh, Corvigo is a hardware-based anti-spam solution. They, uh, they operate in a very, very busy market with more than 50 other off offerings and by some measure quite a bit more than that. So the key for them, what I felt from the beginning is you're operating in a crowded market, a more mature market, you need to differentiate yourself. When I met them, they had an executive summary put together that didn't speak to the investors. It was well thought out, but it didn't uh, address important investor issues. Um, and what I did is I sat down with them and I took the pieces of the company apart, worked on developing objectives and strategies and milestones for each department and put the pieces back together. Um, we had, I had a couple of individual sessions with the founder who was a very good thinker and very strategic and we identified that let's bring everybody's, um, let, let's put an open forum together where everyone can put their ideas on the table. And so we set up some topics in advance, you know, pro starting with products and technology. We laid out, um, you know, the beginnings of their roadmap, which they really hadn't put together a roadmap. They had thought about this problem and they created a product to solve this problem. But, you know, to some extent, and what we did actually later hear from investors was true, this problem is yesterday's problem. It is, it is not tomorrow's problem. And you have to remember that investors are thinking at least 12 to 18 months ahead. Um, so we, we, we laid together a product roadmap based on some ideas that the founders had been mulling over. And we put a product plan in place. We began to talk topically about the different, uh, the various different components and the department's issues around the existing product. And if we went in the direction of the product plan that we had laid out, what that might look like from the other department's perspective. And we had a series of four or five meetings. It's a time-consuming process. Everybody has to get out of the office or lock themselves in a conference room, turn off all the phones, all the Blackberries. Um, and then we began to bounce some ideas off mutual investor friends, places, friendly faces, where we could present ourselves uh, in a, in a, in an, at a place where we wouldn't have too much danger for the future. And I suggest to people that they do that, whether it's your lawyer, um, your accountant, some friends of theirs, friends of your advisors, present yourself to people that you can get some feedback from before you go to actual investors. Uh, we put together our PowerPoint first. We did not put together our business plan until later. We had a lot of things going on simultaneously with the company, a lot of traction, a lot of transition on the product front, 
Um, but at some point, you have to draw a line in the sand and say, this is the view of the company today. This is the business plan as of today, as of hopefully this month, this week. And it will change. Um, and then we lock that down on paper. Um, we put ourselves in front of investors where we had good relationships. And we began to track the feedback. Um, in the case of Corvigo, we ran a simultaneous M&A process. And we got a lot of good feedback from the companies we were meeting with on the M&A level. These are top-level companies. Uh, on the M&A process, we spoke with companies like Nokia, Microsoft, Internet Security Systems, a number of different companies that have products and, and visions in those areas. Um, we also spoke with the analyst community, which is so important to get their feedback. And we amended our materials as we went along with the additional customer and analyst and press feedback that we were gathering. Uh, it's so important to keep it fresh. Um, then the fun comes and somebody gets interested and you go down the path with uh, a couple investors, a handful, three or four. In our case, we had probably definitely more than five investors interested in the company. And you sort between them, between leads and participants and, you know, it, it really depends. At the end of the line, you may find you're working with a company that only wants to do it if they can have the whole deal. And in the case of Corvico, that was the situation. Uh, we ended up closing five and a half million with Sequoia Capital. We got a great board member there. They're going to bring in somebody else, likely, who will help round out the board. And we feel like we've got a good deal for the company. We have excellent investors to work with, and we're really looking forward to the future there.